Welcome to another episode of Leave with Jeffrey podcast. I'm Jeffrey Hernandez, your host, and today, another star in our studio. We have Stefan Ethan J, the CEO of the Business Toolkit. And the reason he's here today is because he has a story to tell all the young entrepreneurs today about the real work it takes to build an empire like he's built in the last seven years. Today, he's standing as the CEO of a media empire. He has a, over 100 staff members, very well comfortably succeeding in reaching out to people and making sure that their needs are met and that the right story is being told through how you go from being no one to being someone. Often we see all these courses, you're getting all these things that they tell you, this is what's gonna happen, this is what being an entrepreneur is about. Today you're gonna hear the truth behind the real work. Stefan, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. Thank you I'm for having so me. I'm so excited to have you. I'm excited for this conversation. <laughs> Ever since the invite, I've been thinking about this experience for not only me, as mm -hmm. I learned from you, and we learn from each other, but for our audience who are going to benefit from your story. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so born and raised in an island called Trinidad and Tobago. Shout out to my Trinis. Um, went to school here at Barry University. Uh, in my dorm room, that's basically where every, all the magic happened. Always had a strong ambition to be something one day. Wasn't sure, but figured it out eventually. So you did go to college. I did. Yeah. A lot of people say college is not needed. What do you think about that? I would say it depends. Depends on your situation. If, you, if you're bored, you're not sure what to do, college helped me navigate what to do and how to do it and meet the right people. But, you know, times have changed. I went to school back in 2016. Now is a different time, but I would say it's based on your circumstance. What's the right circumstance to go to college and the wrong circumstance? For me, I would say I, didn't, I had no idea what angle that I wanted to go. However, when I went to college, I was able to learn a lot and meet a lot of people that became a part of my business. I started hiring people in my honors program yeah, semester after semester, and those people really grew it. And in terms of like not so much should you not go to college, if you're able to bootstrap something, make it really successful, I wouldn't recommend doing it because you figured out your niche. You know, I was, it's interesting because I was telling my son um, most recently, he's going to college for business administration, mm -hmm. and he opened his business already, and I said to him, you're going to college to network, and it's interesting because you're just yeah. referencing that in your conversation mm -hmm. about the fact that you met people there that you hired, and, mm -hmm. and who knows, you can meet the right person who's going to be a partner for life, right? Exactly. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the business toolkit. Yeah, so we were, at, our first headquarters was at Barry University in my dorm room, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the startup budget was $50 <laughs> and a pocket of yellow M&Ms. <laughs> I love it. That's all I had to my name, and uh, I went all in and it was the best thing that I ever did in my life. I felt like a purpose, but back then it was pre-COVID, so branding was really undervalued because people never saw it as something that was gonna make a difference in their business. And I saw a lot of- I'm guilty of that. <laughs> I never thought that social media was important. I never thought that it was something that we needed to brand yeah. because word of mouth you know, was what we were using as a technique. But. Yeah. And I saw a lot of mom and pop stores really struggling because they just didn't prioritize like a logo, a website, social media marketing. And I figured that we could probably, I could probably create something to give that value easily, but also the best customer experience. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so you started in your dorm. Tell me a little <laughs> bit about that experience. I can just imagine a college dorm, how it looks, and all of a sudden now it's a business place. You know, I'm laying there looking up on my bed and I was like, what can I do to make money? I can't do anything right now because my degree was in finance. So in order for me to make some sort of income, I had to graduate, but I'm there and I'm like, what can I do that has no employees, no overheads, and something that I could fulfill myself? And immediately I would start thinking, maybe like a logo design, digital products, but I had to learn how to do it. <laughs> so I went to Amazon Rentals that had it back in the day, and I was able to buy a book on Photoshop, learned it in a week, and then I started doing graphics myself. What is the mission of the business token? So we, our, the business token, we transform companies and we give the tools any company would need to be successful. So whether it be the logo, website, social media, marketing, we're here to scale, but we're here forever. What makes you different? Our big X factor is that I like to say we're not a design company, we're a customer service mm -hmm. company, meaning we're delivering the best customer service because in our industry, there's a pet peeve that the customer service isn't met with the results. And we combine both to have the best outcome. What, have you been successful in, in being the differentiator in the market? I think that's our biggest differentiator, being able to really separate the results that we have 
and bad customer experiences, meaning we want to deliver best customer experience, the best results, combine them together, and that's what sets us apart from the rest, no matter what. So you want customer service, the customer experience, you're mm -hmm. branding, you're creating their logo, exactly. you're, you're making them empowered with the tools they need to do their business. How do you go about doing that? So we started simple. You come in for a consultation, you, it's free 100%, but we want to learn what you're struggling with, the things that you haven't been able to accomplish. And we really analyze and go into the small details that you're missing, and then we basically use our expertise. We have to over 25,000 businesses we've worked with, so we basically take all of our knowledge, our experience, the award-winning designers we have, and we come in like the Avengers and we transform everything. <laughs> I love that. Which Avenger do you go after? Um, I'm going to stick with Thor for now. <laughs> <laughs> you have the hammer. Yeah, I got the hammer. <laughs> Excellent. So tell us a little bit about the services you provide. So is it just logo, branding, what, what kind of Absolutely. Service? So my goal when I was in my dorm room was to do everything at the best value. And you know, as we're scaling, we provide the full stack for graphic design, printing, we incorporate any sort of like business cards, letterheads, the full works, and in terms of social media marketing, we're scaling that department right now. Why should they pick you? To be honest, I think we're the best because I really believe in it. Like our goal is by 2030 is to create one million brands. And I have zero doubt. We're, I have zero doubt that it's not going to happen. I promise you it's going to happen because I just feel like that's my mission and I won't sleep until it really gets done. You know, I like the fact that your goal is not about the revenues, but about the service. I've Thanks. never, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people. I don't think very many people look at a goal as what yeah. you just stated. Our goal is yeah. to do a million brands. That's, yeah. that's very different than my goal is to make a million dollars. Yeah. That's one thing I came down to was never about the profits. It's about the value. And that's one thing young people should really learn is that if you focus on the profits in the beginning, you probably won't survive. If you focus on the value, you'll really be able to succeed passively because you're going to be able to give something to someone to transform their business, their family, their ecosystem, their economy. That's just life changing. So you had a vision, you were in the dorm, you created this, incorporated your company, yep. you hired your first couple of people and mm -hmm. you start to do your clients. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, what challenges did you face? A lot. I mean, <laughs> all my mistakes led to where I am today, and I made them all. <laughs> Expensive ones, cheap ones, but at the end of the day, there was still a mistake. And even like in my first year of business, I didn't even know what payroll was, but I applied it to myself to figure out what it was and how do I learn it and learn everything in order to be the best CEO for my people and customers. What was your greatest challenge? My greatest challenge, I would say, is scaling a company. It is so difficult. It's the most underrated thing out there because the challenges come from you at every angle, nonstop, day to day. Why would you say that's your hardest challenge? Um, because I think it's that it's something nobody could sell you in a book. Nobody could teach you in a talk. Nobody could educate you in a course. Every single business is different and every industry is very different. And no matter what, that entrepreneur is going to have to figure out that business module, how to scale it. It's so unique. You know, as I mentor business owners across the world, one thing that I always tell them is that the reason scaling is so difficult mm -hmm. is because the development it takes of your people to be able to mm -hmm. do it through them because you're exactly. not doing it. The success doesn't depend on you only. Mm -hmm. It depends on how equipped your team is to be able to deliver the vision. Exactly. And sometimes in that scaling mm -hmm. is where the gaps start to occur and the vision that you have is not necessarily communicated yeah. in the people and how they do their work. Exactly. How are you going about developing your people? Because there's a lot of entrepreneurs that mm -hmm. are listening to us now mm -hmm. that have an idea, have a vision, they create a business yeah. plan, they could be in a dorm just like you were, <laughs> but they don't realize training yeah. their people is the most important part? I would say before the training, it's about the hiring. One thing I feel like I have a, a gift for is assimilating the best teams mm. because I get a gut feeling when I see somebody who has the X factor. Now, for me to produce X factor results for clients, I need a team that could create the X. And the factor is just the culture of the company and the values we possess. 100%. So the hiring process is really what I, my strength is. And I really am able to mentor every single employee. I have unlimited access as a CEO for any employee, whether you're an executive or you're an entry level designer. I want you to call me whenever you can for me to help you navigate through any problem. And that's what leaders should do. Help their people navigate through problems because in, in a growing business, not having those answers, it crumbles the organization. 
You know, I'm criticized by a lot of leaders because I make myself available to people that report to others. Mm -hmm. And I don't um, have that bureaucratic protocol for communication because mm -hmm. I believe sometimes the best conversation and the best solutions, mm -hmm. as well as the best diagnosis, mm -hmm. come from those people that are actually doing the work in the lower mm -hmm. levels. Absolutely. That's, it's like they say, whether you're the CEO or the janitor, treat it with the same respect. I believe that. And give them the same voice. There you go. Because sometimes yeah. you never know through who you're going to find the solution, right? Exactly. So tell us a little bit about how you go about selecting your people. Hiring right avoids you firing later. So yeah. what is the typical process for your onboarding? Because a lot of entrepreneurs yeah. that are starting now would benefit from understanding. That. Absolutely. In the beginning, it would honestly, I have no shame. It would just be like, if I encounter someone and I just see that there's something unique, I would try to find some way to bring them on my team, onboard them myself, because I didn't have the resources. When you're doing this in your dorm room, you don't have the systems in place to make this happen. But that was in the beginning. Now I have a really thorough procedure because you know you need to have background checks. I'm trusting people with my customer's brand. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of uh, due diligence that we have to get done. But a lot of the material that we produce is in-house, so it's also a lot of content that I've created to train them in accordance to our culture, our values, knowing we started with $50 in a pack of M&Ms, and that's pretty cool, right? And just being able to do that mentorship over a period of time. Let me ask you, you, you now are leading a team of over 100 people. 105, You yeah. were in a dorm leading four or five people. Yeah. What has, how has it changed your life and your work-life harmony? Oh, it went from uh, my classes were like 9 to 2 p.m. Now I work 24-7, but I love it. I think it's my, my destiny. So every day I wake up, even though I work a lot, I enjoy every single minute of what I do. And my life, it has changed a lot, but I'm still the first graphic designer of the business toolkit. And I'll go to the floor and call 100 customers if I have to, because this is what I do. <laughs> So you said you enjoy it. What particularly do you enjoy about leading people? You know what it is? It's when I see customers succeed. I see that, that, you know, that sparkle in their eye or over the phone, that crack in their voice, and they're like, you changed my life forever just through a logo design or a website, meaning they get that digital footprint and they didn't get scammed by somebody or misled by another agency. We just fulfilled what they were looking for, stress-free, in a genuine way. And hey, you changed our logo for life. <laughs> you did the animation to our yeah. podcast, and it was uh, yeah. amazing. It went from a different type of intro and outro to yeah. a very you know, engaging yeah. one. So yeah. I can definitely uh, attest to the fact that your work does change the life that. of others. So you, you have a lot of people that would be able to learn from you. You're young. Mm -hmm. you're, you're how old now? 29. Yeah, yeah. 29, yeah. the owner of a very successful yeah. company. The dream for all young people that mm -hmm. are coming up and want to be the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. What would be your best advice to them? Purpose. And back to what I said earlier, do not do it for the profits. If you do it for the profits, you want the fancy car, but as soon as you get it, things might crumble. Do it for the value that you could create for a solution that a customer needs. You do that, you'll be super successful, but you'll also enjoy it and go to bed at night really well. What are the cautions that you have for them? Precautions. When you make some money, you do get carried away no matter what, because you're tempted in different ways. You open up to circles and friends of different levels and calibers. Be really careful once success starts to really hit you, because that's your biggest falling point. Ground zero will never be closer to you than when you started, than when you started getting success. I love that. Um, you know, sometimes a lot of them are saying, I don't have the funds. How do I start up? But you started with $50 <sighs> in a bag yeah. of M&Ms. Honestly, today is different, but I would say there are so many tools that are free that could transform and create really magnific magnificent things, like AI. Op uh, open AI give you access to chat GPT. You get the free version. Those things, you can do small things like copywriting and a lot more. I didn't have that when I started, but guys, I started with $50 in a pocket M&Ms, you know, and that $50 was my last. You know, I went all in, and I think no matter the time or generation, once you have that purpose and that passion, that's more valuable than your startup budget. I promise you that. Let me ask you, uh, one of the things that you have taken the greatest pride in mm -hmm. during your time as CEO has been what? Man, I have this thing about hitting the numbers. That really makes me smile because I know I'm doing my job right. Not only seeing the numbers hit, but seeing the families that are provided for in my organization. It makes me not go to bed at night, but I dream. Have, I have really good dreams. <laughs>
That's amazing. And your team members that you currently have, what is the one trait that's a non-negotiable for you? Non-negotiable trait, my team members. Honestly, it's more about the showing up every day because I do it and I, I don't miss a day. Um, and it's okay to get sick and you know, to make a mistake. I am, I'm the biggest for, person that's for mistakes, but in terms of like reoccurring mistakes and showing up every day, those are two non-negotiable things that I have, meaning we learn from our mistakes and we try our best to show up every day. Stefan, uh, Forbes just recently cited that uh, having a personal brand in 2024 is mm -hmm. the most important thing that a business owner and a person at large should do. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? 100% agree. I'll be honest, when I started, I was so focused helping other brands create their brand or other brands, personal brands become successful. I never focused on mine. And my entire team kept telling me, they're like, you're suffocating our company by not doing it. Mm -hmm. And the moment that I started prioritizing it, it only helps and it never hurts. There's nothing bad about it, but it's only gonna bo boost everything that you create to become better. It helps with your integrity, your credibility, your success, everything. So I, I sit down and I say, you know what? I need to do a personal brand. Mm -hmm. What should be my first step? Other than call a business uh, Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, I would say that's your first step. <laughs> but if not, what I would say is stick to the basics. You know, get your Facebook, your Instagram, your TikTok, and honestly have fun in the beginning, but also be careful. Don't say things that will make you be criticized very negatively, but keep in accordance to what you do, the value you provide, talk about it, share it, and then move forward from there. You know, as you are able to share value, you learn from things that people like, you learn things that people don't like, and focus on what people love. So without giving too many of your tricks away, <laughs> what do you think are the do's and don'ts with regards to opening your personal brand and developing it? For the do's, I would say definitely focus on the value, as I keep mentioning. Mm -hmm. the don't, I would say, don't get into the negativity space because negativity is something that once you start it with yourself, it spreads like venom throughout an organization. And, you know, a lot of times people, do, they do it for the popularity, like the reels, let's get a topic that's going to be controversial. But to start with, I would recommend staying away from that. Can you give an example of a topic that could be considered negative in the in the process? Yeah, um, you know, there's just like different, uh, for example, like economical things happening in the world that people may not support or believe in. I would recommend just staying on one side um, on your beliefs, but also at the same time with your personal brand, focus on the value you bring to people. You know, a lot of people think they can just pick up a phone and, and record. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend that to someone as they're doing their personal branding? Honestly, or do you think uh, uh, that yeah. there is a step by which they should... To be honest, to start, I feel like that's how you forget the self-discovery and the passion for it. I would recommend starting by picking up the phone. Keep it simple. Then after that, invest into it. You know, make it more professional. Uh, get that high-quality content. But to start, it's like a bicycle. You, mm -hmm. are, you start with the training wheels and then you <laughs> take it off. <laughs> Let me ask you, um, what is the return on investment for a person that mm -hmm. is opening a personal brand? So what should they look for as mm -hmm. their targets, their goals, and mm -hmm. what data should they consider as a win? That's, that's a great question. You know, I would say, for example, myself, my personal brand is, is correlated to my business success. And I definitely am able to capitalize on that the more success I bring to my personal brand. Now, if you don't have a business, I would recommend that whatever your personal brand is, you know, start selling something. Start giving something of value that people could pay for because they believe in what you're saying, like an ebook or a course or something simple that people could find somewhere to check out. Because if you don't have a way to check out, nobody's going to buy anything from you. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, so people use Instagram and others use YouTube mm -hmm. and TikTok and TikTok mm -hmm. and uh, Twitter. Yeah. Um, which one do you recommend they start by? TikTok. I, Why? I have seen the most amazing results in TikTok because anyone could blow up. Mm. I would say it's significantly harder on Facebook and Instagram. TikTok is just a platform that has literally made people very important overnight. And what are the characteristics of, of developing a personal brand in TikTok versus Instagram and Facebook? So Instagram and Facebook, you know, the following has to be there for sure to, go, to, to keep, get the consistent results. On, I'll give you an example. On TikTok, I had maybe 500 followers, right? Before that, zero. But videos that we're posting, 
we're getting like 20,000 views. And I'm like, for me, that was a big deal because I had zero followers at one point. And I'm like, on Facebook and Instagram, me, myself, I would never do those numbers. Never. Wow. You know, I never considered TikTok mm -hmm. as the first step yeah. because most people tend yeah. to tell you Instagram. Yeah. And that's the one most people follow or look at exactly. and, and never had thought of it that way. Is there a specific characteristics of the video that you do for TikTok versus Instagram? To be honest, for me, I would actually post on TikTok, download the video, upload it to Instagram and Facebook. Because if it worked on TikTok, <laughs> I would hope it works on Facebook and Instagram. But the big factor that I no noticed that was differentiated is just that TikTok was just not limited just based on your followers. And that was a big thing for me because I was like, wow, these videos are getting places way beyond my following. And that's, to me, that's the biggest ROI I could possibly get versus other platforms. So now you've been in this for seven years, you've been the CEO of your company. Mm -hmm. What recommendations do you have around mentoring that CEOs should seek when they yeah. start? So there's a lot of 19, 20, 21 year olds yeah. that right now are opening their business mm -hmm. and think they have to figure it out on their own. What yeah. do you recommend? Did you experience a mentor? And if so, what did yeah. it do for you? If I could go back, I would get a mentor because I mentor people right now. And I, I feel I'm so jealous because I know the value that they're getting. Back when I started, I felt like it was me against the world. Mm. And to me, that was just my limit in knowledge. I didn't understand that what a mentor could do, nor did I have the zeal to go seek one. But I would say if you could learn from other people's mistakes, Warren Buffett says it all the time, do it. Because honestly, you're going to save a lot of bumps in the road that could be paved flat, and you could just drive straight into a nice sunset. I would get a mentor no matter what. What do you think would be the crash in developing your personal brand? The crash? I would say a lot of times people get carried away and they forget the objective behind your, you doing something. For example, if you start a business and you don't want to make a profit, you lost the vision already. That's the purpose of a business. Mm -hmm. So with a personal brand, figure out an objective. For example, the business toolkit. I want to create a million brands by 2030. The moment I go to any tangent away from that, I'm probably gonna go crash because I'm missing what I, st I stood out for in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a personal brand, stick to your vision. You know that, that you just mentioned something that our entrepreneurs that are listening would definitely benefit from, and that's sticking to something. Forget personal brand, yeah. business in general. Yeah. A lot of people uh, open a business, a week later they have a different idea and then a different idea and then a different yeah. idea. Yeah. What would you say to those people? I would say stick to what's the best selling product in the beginning, but also what you're most passionate about. For example, me, it was logo designs. I didn't do anything else for like a year. All I did was a logo design, logo design, logo and design. And you're very good at it. <laughs> Thank you. But you see, the, ah, you actually just said it. I became really good at it. And if I did multiple things, I would spread my time between like 10%, between 10 products, and I probably wouldn't be the best logo designer out there. But because we focus on that one specific product, once you become the best, that's the funnel for the volume. And then the rest of the services should complement your biggest X factor. You know, the hardest thing for a leader is to have a vision and be able to communicate the vision mm -hmm. in an actionable way. Mm -hmm. What's your strategy for that? I keep it simple. And not I only love that, that. <laughs> I keep it super simple. Um, and I don't try to confuse people. And I always believe just being able to say something in a short amount of words that anyone could understand. It's a skill, yeah, but honestly, it's priceless value you could give to anybody. How do you deal with employees that don't do their job? That's Which a great question. Which is the question. greatest headache <laughs> that all leaders are having right now. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. To be honest, I don't even think I know the right answers for that because I'm still figuring it out at 29 years old. But what I would say, patience is a big deal and putting yourself in the shoes of the employee is even a bigger thing that you have to do and it's a uh, it's really tough because you know you're paying the salary you got to meet numbers and putting yourself in that person's shoes in the, the midst of you being frustrated is a hard thing to do but you also at the same time you got to understand everyone is humans and sometimes you just got to be human to understand a human you know as i train leaders nationally i always tell them you got to be empathetic to the person mm -hmm. but you can't be empathetic to the deliverable yeah. And that's a real important differentiator mm -hmm. for leaders yeah. to understand is that, mm -hmm. yes, I can be empathetic to you. I can even help yeah. you. I can yeah. go out of my way to solve something for yeah. you, but I still need the deliverable and I still yeah. need you to do your job because yeah. that deliverable mm -hmm. is impacting the entire organization. You're absolutely right. And I'll be honest, I'm facing one of those situations currently where 
the actions of one individual affects the entire organization. But you as the leader, the CEO, or whoever it may be, you might be a HR person that's the head of HR, you gotta understand if you don't do your job and that person continues to fail, the entire organization fails. Because the reason why, that one person between segments of a company, they all get affected. How do you deal with the um, current structure around post-COVID impact in your business? Honestly, so, yeah, it did us. It actually did us a positive. Okay. The reason why pre-COVID branding was not essential, post-COVID it became mandatory. So meaning everybody wanted a logo, a website, because the reason why a Facebook page and a Facebook shop, you could sell something online, and that's where we got a lot of demand. To be honest. Um, and I'm really thankful for it, of course, but you know, now is the race to keep up with the trends. Because if you fall back right now, you're probably gonna hit ground zero. So I, I know opening a brand new company mm -hmm. and you being their uh, counselor mm -hmm. is easier because mm -hmm. you're starting from scratch. Yeah. How do you go about dealing with companies that have been there already, have people set in their ways, mm -hmm. uh, didn't believe in social media, yeah. now are sitting in front of you, what do you yeah. do to help them through that transition? Yeah. That's actually a, a good 30% of our customer base. Um, and I consider them the high value clients because once you show them a proof of concept that works, They'll go all in with you. But a lot of times it comes down to be a humbling process with the leadership of that organization where we say, hey, what you've been doing for the many couple of years wasn't working, right? Okay, we just came in and we give you a little proof of concept that it does work. Are you willing to listen to us? That's the first step. Because if you just jump in and start doing and doing and doing, and they're saying no, 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 it's just a hamster wheel for disaster. Do you take every client? I don't take every client, but in terms of working with a very core base of clients like yourself i'm there yeah. so do you have you had an opportunity where uh, has come before you very lucrative and mm -hmm. you've had to say no because you realized if you said yes it could actually be a, a nightmare all the time i always believe that as i say profit it's important for a company but it's not it's not important for my success meaning that if you sometimes a big a no is the biggest lifesaver you can make in a business because a lot of times if you say yes to the wrong things it's going to end you and sometimes you need to make that intuitive decision to say no because it's the better for you your company and everyone you know i i can say that in five decades of life and three decades mm -hmm. in leadership uh one decade in business uh, entrepreneurship i i have seen where when you don't say no and you know you should have mm -hmm you pay a price. It backfires. Financially, mm -hmm. spiritually, acclimatically, yeah. mentally, and health-wise, yeah. everything. You know, and I, I've been there. When I just started, I never wanted to say no to anything because I was like, man, this is a gold rush we are having right now. I gotta say yes to everything. And there was some points where I said yes, and I lost so much sleep. It affected everything but me personally, family, friends, my, me going to the gym, all that got affected. And for what? For what? There you go. Because yeah. sometimes those, those business opportunities that entrepreneurs need to say no to mm -hmm. actually bring the least amount of yeah. revenues and, and profits. Yeah. And not only that, the most stress. hundred <laughs> uh, percent. They'll, they'll bring a lot of headaches, that's yeah. for sure, but they won't bring you money. So who are you personally? Me We've personally. We talked about you for a little bit now as a CEO. What do you awesome. stand for? Honestly, I want to make a difference in the world because I feel like that's my mandate. That's what I was born to do. It's in my DNA. When I wake up, I just feel this urge that I know I gotta, I gotta do something that makes a difference. But truth is, deep down inside, I'm just a simple guy on a mission to do something big. How big? I don't know, but I, do I know how big it's gonna become? I'll guarantee I'm gonna work to get there. Wow, you know, some of the things that some of the young entrepreneurs that I talk to and mentor consistently are confronting is the challenge between when I'm opening a business, it's all consuming. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to build the relationship. I saw mm -hmm. one of your reels recently that mm -hmm. said um, it is a lonely place. Oh, yeah. And sometimes in that solitude is when you are the most creative and most focused. Talk a little bit about that. I'm a, yeah, that's something I had to learn the hard way. I'm only 29. I'm, I'm not a guru or anything. You know, I figure out my stuff daily. I'm a, as I mentioned, I'm a simple guy. But there's a point in life where you have to understand what your mandate is, what you're set out for, and what's the sacrifices required to get you there. Me, personally, it was cutting off all the distractions, meaning friends, maybe some family who's not believing in your vision, maybe some vices that is not beneficial to you. You have to really remove it all one day and be able to really laser focus on your mission in this life. I did that, and it was the best decision ever. Um, and I would highly recommend maybe checking out the 75 hard. I did that challenge, um, and it was life-changing to me. 
Yeah. Tell us, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, the 75, I'm not familiar with it. <laughs> 75 hard, you do two workouts. So it's like 45 minutes each, one indoor, one outdoor. But the outdoor workout makes you connect with like nature and get some sunlight. That's something creative guys, you know, you don't get much sunlight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you read like 10 to 15 pages. You drink a gallon of water and no alcohol, good diet. And you run it for 75 days. Now, if you miss one of these things throughout that 75 days, you start over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you miss any? I didn't. I didn't. You were stuck to the plan. But not only that, it gave me an objective to fulfill my purpose. That's what I used it for. It was like a little hack for my brain because I was like, man, I, I'm a really competitive guy. And I was like, I'm not going to miss a day if it means not talking to friends or family. I'm going to just stick to this and, and get it done. And I, that's what I did. I just cut off all the distractions and focus on the objective. And honestly, business was the best because I produced the best results as a CEO. Yeah. What do you say, what would you say is your greatest life lesson? Greatest life lesson is, in the beginning, nobody would believe in you. Your idea might seem crazy. Honestly, in most cases, it will seem crazy because that's what everybody thought my idea was when I wanted to create a million brands back in 2016. But I promise you now, if I tell some people that right now, they believe me. And I would say in the beginning stages or whenever, wherever you are in life, whoever demotivates you, don't worry about them. Focus on the mission because that's what's important. I love that. The fact that they won't believe in you, especially the more creative, mm -hmm. the least amount of people that can connect to it and relate to it, right? Exactly. And so if you were to suggest to these young entrepreneurs, um, I, I get all these no's from people mm -hmm. when I'm trying to decide I'm going to open my business. I have mm -hmm. this vision. I have this plan. Mm -hmm. And everywhere I go, people don't believe in it. What mm -hmm. should I do? That's a great question. I would say, for example, what I did, I can only talk about what I did because the reason why I know what worked for me, but I would say execution is the most important part. You could have thoughts, you could have dreams, you could have nightmares, whatever it may be. Once you execute something that you believe in, that's the first step. Everything else, it really doesn't matter, but you'll be wasting time if you have all these thoughts, emotions, and feelings to just waste it on something that was never executed. Mental health has mm -hmm. to be a priority for you because Absolutely. as a leader, we are, everyone's chaos becomes <laughs> ours, everyone's yeah. situations are yeah. ours. Yeah. How do you deal with your mental health? What do you do to make sure you stay yeah. balanced? That's one thing I feel like we connected with a lot because I, uh, I, I believe in the 5 a.m. club. I get up super early, I meditate, I take some deep breaths. I have a really fluffy dog mm -hmm. and um, you know, I, I hug her up in the morning and gratitude is the best investment I ever made. Gratitude for everything you have in the worst or best times in your life. It's a sort of silence that's so peaceful. It wouldn't even ch only change your life. It would literally change your perception on everything. And gratitude is something I practiced this year. And it really not only changed my life, but it's just it's a sense of peace that feels so good. You know, that, that's a, gratitude is something that I always tell people that it changes your life. Mm -hmm. When you can wake up in the morning mm -hmm. and always have three to five reasons as to why you should say thank you and mm -hmm. throughout the day as well. Yeah. What are the gratitude practices you, you employ? To be honest, in every stressful situation now, before I deal with it, what I do is that I actually like plant my foot on the floor and I say to myself, man, I'm so thankful for, to just be alive right now. That's the first one. Then after I just go into the things that I accomplished in that month that I'm really gratitude for. And then when I go tackle a problem, pff, home runs <laughs> every time. What's next yeah. for you? To be honest, uh, the business toolkit, you know, it was, it's my baby. And I plan to get the group of companies going as we branch off into the printing toolkit, the branding toolkit, and a lot more. Um, and beyond that, I'm not sure yet. I'm only 29, but as I start my 30s, that is going to start soon. I know I'll get creative and come up with some more stuff. How about family? Where are you thinking yeah. of building a family? Are you building a yeah. family? Um, right now, I'm a bachelor, and you know I do have a, a beautiful dog that thinks she's my girlfriend. Um, <laughs> she probably is, right? <laughs> she probably is. Yeah. But I do plan out. My goal is to definitely have that family in the future. That's yeah. nice. So as you, uh, we wrap up this podcast mm -hmm. with so many uh, wonderful, informative information you provided our audience, um, what would be the three things you would tell those entrepreneurs mm -hmm. you should definitely take from this uh, podcast? First and foremost, whatever you believe in, believe in it, but also believe in it to the point that if anybody um, doesn't believe in you, it doesn't matter. The second, when, whatever you believe in is your, what you're going to do, don't focus on the profits, focus on the value. And the last thing I would say is know that if you hit a home run and your success comes, 
temptation does happen as you grow and scale a company, but stick to the beginning, the humble beginnings. This shirt is my humble shirt because I remember where I started every day, and that's the biggest differentiator, I would say. Do you give opportunities to people that come to you and say, yeah. I only have $50, yeah. I have an M&M &M bag, I yeah. want to open a business. Yeah. Well, how do you give back to the world? Absolutely. You know, I actually have two uh, people that I mentor right now, and it was one of those situations where they're like, Man, he actually told me, he was like, I don't have $50, I have $15. <laughs> and he was like, can you help me with that? It was still a multiple of five. You know? There you go. <laughs> and, you know, I definitely uh, help out in anywhere I can. If you message me on Instagram, I usually respond with a voice note. Free advice, I give it because the reason why, I know if I could have the opportunity, I would want that in return from somebody I ask. You know, um, as I want to say thank you to you for coming Absolutely. here today. But more importantly, I want to say thank you for the service you provide. I am a client of yours, a mm -hmm. customer of yours, and um, your team emulates everything you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I can attest to the fact that customer service mm -hmm. is a priority, mm -hmm. that you're very honest in what you do, and more importantly, you're, you're there shoulder to shoulder with your clients. Mm -hmm. And so I want to say thank you for being the exception and not the norm, mm -hmm. and more importantly, for empowering all of us that really know nothing, mm -hmm. and that you are showing us the way, right? That, yeah. That's really important. And to you, the listeners, it is real. Personal branding is important. It is important for you to have a good website, a good logo, for you to have a presence in social media, not only as a company, but as a person. Specifically, if you're the leader of your company, you heard it from someone that not only is on a track to have a million brands by 2030, but has already built so many and has seen the impact it has for you as a person and for you as a business. But you also heard that it's very important that you do it for fun first, mm -hmm. that you don't do it because it's a compliance, because it's a checklist, or because of a profit you are aiming to take. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to the stories out there, but make sure that you're providing value to the people, to your niche, to your audience, and that in that value you have something that can convert because at the end of the day, it is a business. Mm -hmm. And you wanna make sure that you are treating it as a business mm -hmm. and that your followers are your customers and they deserve that content that you are providing them. You heard from someone who is a young CEO that being a CEO, being an entrepreneur is not sexy as everyone thinks it is. It's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. It's a 24-7 job and more importantly, it's a servant type of job. You are for your people first and you are second. Mm -hmm. And what's made him successful is the fact that he believes in his people, he empowers his people, and he understands if you hire right, you don't have to fire later. And more importantly, he's humble and he's there for them just like if he was one of them. He never is, I'm the CEO here on the 52nd floor and everyone else is down here. He's there right with them. And as you said, as he said, he has, they have their phone number, they call him, they talk to him, they tell him all the things they need. You as an entrepreneur, don't forget the fact that you're only gonna be as successful as the people that you develop. And if you need help for your branding, don't hesitate to call the business toolkit. I want to thank all of the listeners for joining us today. More importantly, I want to thank you for joining Absolutely. us and sharing your expertise. There's a lot of people that from today's conversation will definitely understand the importance of personal branding, but more importantly, what it is to be a true entrepreneur, which is empowering people. So thank you so much. And for our audience, stay inspired.